For this video, my goal is to walk you through the motion interface in Alter Inspire 2025. Now, Inspire has a motion ribbon that has many specialized tools that are set up just for motion analysis. In my model here, I have a base and a series of links that I want to set in motion. So to start, I need to ground my model. And these are the parts that we want to be immovable, so I'll choose the base here. Now next, I want to identify any rigid groups. And these are parts that we want grouped together that act as one rigid body. So I'm going to choose these arms and the base as well. Now you can see as I start defining these, they appear in my model browser here on the left. And that's so I can go back and edit these definitions whenever I need to. Now the next step is to identify the joints. And Inspire makes this really easy. It automatically identifies where joints should be placed. And you can see when I start clicking these selections, it looks at the model and it gives its best definition of that joint type. Now with this new version, you have the ability to set limits on how far that joint can move when it's in motion. And it can be really useful when you're looking at things that are limited. With these first three joints, it gives me a pin, which is exactly what I want. And then for the last one, when I click it, it shows a hinge, which is great. That's exactly what I want. And then again, over here in the model browser on the left, every step I'm taking is defined so I can go back and make changes if needed. And now I want to define my motion. So up here in the ribbon, I have the option between a motor or an actuator. This one, I'm going to choose a motor. And then I can attach that motor to the shaft here. Now, once I have it attached, I have a few options. I can change the velocity or speed of my motor. And then I can also scale the motor as needed. And again, this just makes it really easy for me to customize this for my application. So one last step before I actually get to the motion part of it is I do want to add gravity. And again, this just makes the motion a little more accurate. Now with Inspire, if you want to do some advanced contact definition or add any springs, you have the option to do that right up here as well. Now I want to see my model in action. So up here on the Analyze Motion icon, I can click these two arrows, which will do a quick run of the motion. Now this little circle up here above the icon gives me an update on the status and the progress of my run. So I'm happy with the initial motion, so now I want to do a full run, and in here I can change any of the parameters for my run here in this menu. And again, just like the quick run, once I click that run button, it'll give me a little status icon here above the icon. Once it completes, you can see I get a little check mark there, which means that my motion is viable and I can move on to the next step, which is analyze my part. Now once I click that, I have to go and click the part that I want analyzed. Now in here I have the different study options like what results I want, and even I can change the mesh size if I wanted to right from this menu. I pick the part and then I can go in here and change the element size if needed. I'll leave it alone for this study. Okay, so I'll go back and analyze this part. You can see it. I'm just gonna choose stress on this one and then I'll hit run. And just like in the motion part of it, you can see I have this little circle here above my analyze part icon, which shows me the status as well as this progress bar here. And now I can see the results of the simulation from a displacement or a stress overview. And this is just based on the motion that I set in place. One thing I want to make sure I show you is how easy it is to make changes in the study once you want to run the simulation again. So let's say I want to change the motor speed to 120 RPM. I can click on the motor and then make that change, go back and rerun that study. So now that it's done, I can see the difference in results between my first run and my second run. Again, all this was done in seconds or minutes and not hours. Okay, I'm gonna run a full motion run again. And again, I just wanna show you one thing that I missed on the first time when I walked through the, the motion analysis. Okay, now that that motion study is run, I wanna show you how you can get some quick visualizations. So if I come up here to this icon and I click that little graph and then click on a separate part, I can see some reporting based on the motion analysis. You can see I get different results for the motor versus a link and this just keeps giving me more design intelligence as I make more design iterations. And one of the features in this new release is that I've been working out of a profile called the Design Profile, which a design profile basically is giving me all the features and tools that are necessary for a designer. Then I can also move over to an analyst profile, which gives me some advanced features for kind of a deeper motion analysis. 
So with all this, my background in the CAD world, I can say that these motion tools in Ultra Inspire are some of the easiest I've seen to use. And so I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about it. If you want to learn more, go to www.trueinsight.io. Thank you.